Club, I'm Patrick Eckner, and this is the Fascinating and Dangerous Places Scientists Don't Explore. It's uh, going to be talking about Ella al Shamahai's TED Talk, and uh, let's get right into it. Uh, to start off, this is a map the British Foreign Office releases every year. Uh, it details areas where their citizens are and are not allowed to travel. The red zones are areas that they cannot go to and can't even fly over. The yellow zones they can fly over but cannot go to. Ella al Shamahai is an, a scientist. She studies early human origin, and uh, humans uh, were believed to have their start in Africa, so she needs to be able to go there to contribute to her studies and her research. Now that I've uh, shown you the extent to which scientists are limited, let me explain how Ella al Shamahai utilizes humor, personal anecdotes, and her heritage to create an effective presentation. Um, the presentation, uh, being located in Britain, gives Al Shamahai an advantage in achieving, uh, getting pressure on the British Foreign Office, as well as connecting with her audience. Uh, she can connect with her audience because she's British. She even said in her speech that being born in Britain was the best decision of her life. She had no part in making. Uh, Britain's passport is also super strong, the strongest in the world uh, by the rankings. And uh, she's also presenting to a group of British citizens, which is super helpful because she wants to get pressure on the parliament and those citizens have the votes to influence the representatives that get parliament chairs. Uh, Al-Shamahai's Al logos is that she uses humor throughout her presentation to better relate to her audience. She establishes a very lighthearted tone super early by making a joke. Well, I'm a paleoanthropologist. I'm a National Geographic explorer specializing in fossil hunting in caves in unstable, hostile, and disputed territories. And we all know that if I was a guy and not a girl, that wouldn't be a job description. That would be a pickup line. Uh, St. Paul's a Catholic school, so I'm not going to explain that joke, but everybody got it, and uh, they laughed. So that helps to establish that really lighthearted tone. Uh, moving on, after bringing up a very serious and somber topic, which is Kenyan's, Kenya's famine, which is killing people, she uh, re-establishes her lighthearted tone by making a joke about Facebook dates and needing to stalk her date before going. And it's the same as having a reconnaissance before you go on an expedition. Uh, lastly, uh, Al Shamahai's ethos or reasoning. Uh, she drives home her final point by appealing to her listeners' childhood fantasies. Al Shamahai says that many of the stories we grew up on were about explorers venturing into dangerous and unknown areas with the goal of bettering the world, just like herself. For example, Indiana Jones goes into caves and booby traps um, with the goal of just exploring. Al Shamahai furthers her point that scientists need to be able to travel these red zones because sometimes their discoveries help in the aid of effort by boosting morale of the people there. For example, Ned the Neanderthal was found in Iraqi Kurdistan and uh, actually uh, is a source of pride for the people there and even helped to spark many charities being founded in the years after his uh, discovery. Lastly, now that I've told you all about Allah al Shamahai, her presentation goal, and even herself, let me ask you a question. Do you think scientists should be permitted to go to these red zones? I certainly think that if they want to and are trained properly, they ought to. Now, there isn't much any of you can do to pressure parliament into changing their mind, but these uh, expeditions oftentimes need money because they're not funded by the government. So if you go online and see uh, on a GoFundMe that they need $5 or so, go ahead and donate it, okay? Thank you.